Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the REI Network podcast with me, Gavin Timms. Today is definitely a special episode. Uh, I'm super, super excited and honored to have this guy on. Uh, he's an author. Uh, he's, uh, uh, I guess he's the goat, really, of our industry. Uh, I don't know if uh, he likes being called that, but that's what he is to me and a lot of people in our industry. And again, I'm thankful to have him. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring him over. Here he is, Mr. Robert Allen. Bob, how you doing? Oh, very good, Gavin. So glad to be here with you. I I appreciate it. Um, I, we met um, we met in Key West probably yes. three months ago now. Yeah. Um, you came and spoke at Tim Mai's event, and uh, we got to hang out, which was awesome. And I. Uh, asked you kindly hey do you mind doing a podcast and you're like sure send me an email so here we are we got the date scheduled and um you know i'm honored to be interviewing you i know obviously you've been in the industry you know you forgot more than i know okay and uh um i just want to really you know get get you on here there's there's a lot of my audience that knows who you are that follow you you know you've had books of some fantastic books um and I just want to really pick your brain. It was a selfish thing of mine to get you on, but I thought, you know what? Instead of having an individual call, let's record this and get it out and uh, and share the knowledge. So, you're talking about books. Uh, Nothing Down is the all-time best-selling hardcover in real estate. Um, it got me launched 41 years ago, believe it or not. Wow! And this sold millions of copies and um, helped thousands and thousands of people become millionaires but maybe just buy their first house because it's about creative financing you you like to use those words uh, because traditional financing is getting a mortgage you know putting a large down payment and, and acting through the traditional retail real estate world we don't want to do that uh then well, that was followed up by creating wealth um million copies also number one new york times bestseller and then then uh, the multiple streams of income that many Maybe you might have heard about t 10 ways of generating lifetime streams of income, money while you sleep. Um, those are those are probably my three three biggest. The One Minute Millionaire is another one and, uh, you know, 10 others. So that's that's what I do. I, I, I invest much less in real estate now than I did at the very beginning of my career. Um, right. because I, I, as I've always said, often said, I'd, love, I'd rather fix up a human being than a piece of real estate any day. So yeah. I like to I like to do this. So this is I enjoy this podcast, Gavin, because you're going to reach people who were like me, like you, when we got started. Something got us interested in this, but real estate as an investment. Um, we we started off as beginners and. And we bought a bunch of real estate, and we found the value, the benefits of it. And yeah. then I, when I wrote my book, and I got started getting letters of people who said, "Well, I use this technique. I use that technique. This worked. This I made this amount of money. I'm now financially free. I'm now made a million. I'm now made a hundred million. Yeah, literally, I've, I have students who uh, I was on the phone with one just a few minutes ago who has a net worth of uh, about fifty million dollars. Uh, over the last 10 years, just just starting, you know, and so that's that's what I do. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, and I look at now like, you know, the resources available to me, right? When I got into the business, I don't know now, seven, eight years ago um, and, you know, came over from England, didn't know anything about real estate, got given an opportunity that I took with both hands, but I look at the resources available then, and I look at the resources now. I mean, there's so much like podcasts like this that wasn't there back in the day. So when, when you were doing this 41 years ago, I mean, what was it that, uh, how did you kind of get started? What resources was you using to, to get going? Well, two books. And so it starts with books and then, went to some seminars expanded my knowledge from seminars started to network with with people who were who were doing it uh got some mentors you know some paid mentors some mostly free mentorship uh the first two books that got me started was think and grow rich 
and how I turned a thousand dollars into a million dollars in real estate in my spare time by William Nickerson. Those two books, um, th they kind of got me started. Now today, Think and Grow Rich is sold about a hundred million copies since it was published in 1937. And if you haven't have that part of your library, then I'm going to give it to everybody who's watch watching today. I'm just going to give it to give you the digital book and the audio of of the entire book that I recorded in my voice. I'm going to give it to everybody because if it's not in your library, it should be. It is the granddaddy. It's the goat of of the the the, the success mindset books. It's the goat. If you don't have that in your library, you're not smart. So you should go to robertallen.com, R-O-B-E-R-T-A-L-L-E-N, and sign up uh, the opt-in page, and I'll send you links to download the entire thing. And That's uh, awesome. That's, that's all I promote there. Just I just like to give that book away. Got me started. Then yeah. I went to some seminars. Um, uh, I went all over the country, spent thousands of dollars going to seminars. Um, then I started to teach seminars, and I did in my own little hometown of Provo, Utah. I went to BYU as a as a, a, um, a student, and when I graduated, I couldn't find a job. There was a bad recession at the time, and so I had those two books, and I thought, well, my dad gave me a thousand dollars for for my graduation present, so I'm going to take that thousand dollars and I'm going to do what the book title said. You know, so That's I bought amazing. a property, and then I bought two, and three, and four, and five, six, ten, and twelve. You know, and, and I became a millionaire, never having gotten a, you know a salary job, uh, even to this day, frankly, um, uh, never having gotten a, a salary job. Uh, but my first million took me. You know, I never really know exactly. It's less than five years, probably three to four years. I watched the net worth grow up. Um, so. That's what that's what got me started, and then I started teaching. I found I love to teach. I, it's yep. it's my gift. It's what I do. You know? Yeah, no, that's that's great, and and I think we share, you know, the same thing. That I was a golf professional for ten years, and I, I, that's what I did. I was a, I taught uh, golf, and that's why I step into this role. People say, well, why, you know, why do you want to teach? Like if you're if you're doing all these deals, you know, why teach? And it's like, but it's either in you, right? You can't you can't just take someone to be a coach or a teacher. It's either built in you, in my opinion, right? Yeah. And and I get more from taking somebody that's never done a deal or believe that or believes they can't do it and then changing that mindset and doing their first deal and developing like you just said into two deals to 10 deals to hundred thousand dollars a month that rewards me more than anything i can do in my business personally as a fulfillment for me i i never believed it i i thought i didn't really understand how much joy you can get when you get a letter from somebody and I've got letters from all over around the world who who uh, re picked up a copy of Nothing Down. I, one of my favorite stories in Japan: a guy was in, living in this in the park, homeless, and went to a, a used bookstore and found a copy of Multiple Streams of Income. Okaman Choja is what they call it in Japan, and and re read the book in the books in the used bookstore. It was too much money for him. He didn't have enough money to buy it in the used bookstore. So he went and found another book that had a cheaper price tag on it and switched price tags. So it was like a dollar, you know, and he bought multiple streams of income, th this one. And it, it uh, you know, so he's a multimillionaire today. He's one of my one of my business partners in Japan, believe it or not, how you how you network with some people like that. And that gives me such joy when somebody used it and did it and then, and then changed their life. They, when you change one person's life, you change a generation's of, of lives. So yeah. for what, your, your viewers, why, why, why are we telling you, you this? You might say, well, you know, why are these guys talking about teaching other people how to do this? Why are they doing that? Because G Gavin and I have learned that when you teach it to somebody else, you get it better yourself. That's the first yeah. reason. Second reason is you're eventually going to do what both of us did. Both of us share information with a private, small, select group of clients. 
that we work with. Sometimes it's 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 millions. Sometimes it's fifty thousand. Sometimes it's ten thousand. Sometimes it's one hundred. Sometimes it's one. So yeah, we generate revenue from that. We don't. So when I started in my first a couple of you know very my first million i was buying it highly leveraged which means y- your cash flows are really tight so i did a real seminar on the side to generate another couple thousand bucks a month just to kind of help f- flesh out some of my cash flows for the real estate i was doing and i found out that i like to do that better than the real estate yeah. however I, I still continue to, to do both a little seminar in my city and i invited 100 people to come and and 100 people came and spent about 100 bucks a piece and this was in 1978 so this is this is a while ago and 100 people times 100 dollars is ten thousand bucks now for everyone there it's 100 bucks it's nothing you know it's nothing but for me it was ten thousand dollars for that weekend and that's serious money even even absolutely 35 years ago that's serious money and even today that's serious money so it it generated this extra little gush of cash flow um and so i I like to teach and i learned from teaching whatever i taught i could do better and therefore i ended up this extra trip that i ended up with multiple streams of income which eventually some of you who are watching this now will do the same thing First, you need to learn how we do it, you know, because it's a separate stream of income. Yep. Real estate uh, has its systems. Information marketing has its systems. The internet has its systems. Stock market has a system. Everything has a system. Like multiple streams of income, there are 10 specific systems that I talk about in this book. Infopreneuring is one of those systems and how you, how you do it. Um, a lot of people always ask me, you know, do you make more money teaching people than doing the real estate yourself? And the answer is, yeah, yeah, like a thousand times more. But you still do the real estate because it's another stream of income. It builds long-term wealth as it should. And then you then you take that stream of income and you add another stream. You go, you're going to be investing in some kind of an internet business. It might invest, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be a serial entrepreneur. You're going to look at opportunities everywhere you see it. So, yeah. so that's that was the the the, the arc of my career. Uh, Gavin, you're probably having a similar arc, but yeah. some of you may not want to sell your information. You might feel like I'm going to hold this to my to my vest. I'm going to keep it close to me. I don't want anybody else to know my secrets, right? And I'm I'm going to tell you bluntly that is a scarcity mindset Mindset. yep and scarcity mindset means that that if you keep all this stuff to your close to the vest because you're afraid somebody's going to steal it more than likely that fear will make it happen whatever you fear you get you're afraid of having somebody steal your information they will you know you have to be in an abundant mindset which is as i give and share with people the universe recognizes a giver and the universe may not give have the person you're giving to respond and give you back in reciprocity it may come from a different side a different angle you know a different place for example tim mai had an event in april in key west that you attended i attended Uh, they invited me to come uh, speak to that event this was as just as covid was you know is subsiding for a while and i thought i don't know if i want to go you know that's uh i don't know who these people are um tim and uh another gentleman had put it together and they had both read my book books and had looked to me as as you call me the goat and uh and so i i felt like you know maybe well yeah let's go I took my wife. We had a wonderful time. Um, it was a it, it was a, a an opportunity to to network with with people who think like I think. But what we did at that event was was powerful. I don't know if you stayed for the Saturday of that, uh, Gavin, but we raised some money for 
um, for a uh, for charities, and we didn't know how much money we were going to raise. Um, I actually one of my favorite charities is Charity Vision. I had uh, one of my eyes blow out a few years ago, and so it's all messy now. My retina detached, so vision is really important. So let's raise some money for Charity Vision and for the American Federation for the Blind. And the guy that was one of the speakers was blind, you know, Sean. Uh, yep. He was blind, and so he said, "Well, let's raise some money. Let's let's give. Let's see what what can happen." So we started, you know, raising a little money. That night we brainstormed. We thought, "How, how much money can we raise?" There's like 100 people here. Um, what can we raise? 100 grand, you know. And we just started off that Saturday, and l- literally we ended up raising six hundred thousand dollars from less than a hundred people and Amazing. giving you know you give so i gave a two-day seminar on how to write a best-selling book that we had that people whoever gave at least twenty five hundred dollars hundred percent of that money went to the charities i got zero but i just gave yep. and what happened is that by giving i created a lot more friends number one but the, the people who showed up at at uh, that two-day event, wanted to me to coach them on how to write a best-selling book. So that giving generated not only hundreds of thousands for other charities, but hundreds of thousands to me personally, without trying to sell anything. You just yeah. by giving. so I want all of you uh, to to just realize that if you want to create wealth, model really wealthy people, and you'll find almost to a person. They are massive givers. And almost, if you look at poor people, almost to a person, they say they don't have enough money, so they don't give any money, but they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't even give it if they had it. You, you have to be a giver. If you yep. give a little, you give a lot, you just be a giver. The universe re- re- rewards you for that. Yeah, no, 100%. That's, that's really good. You know, one of my main words that I use is collaboration right um and i think doing things in pairs and twos and threes and tens and hundreds of you just said you're more powerful as a unit right than than on your own um i talked to a potential coaching client yesterday and uh, he's a younger person and we're talking he said well you're already working with someone in that area so you know that means that there's a conflict of interest and i said you're missing the point absolutely not i was like you haven't got to worry about one me or the person in that market you need to that's a good thing because you can collaborate together to get more done to achieve more things at a faster rate um so i think you're 100 percent spot on and um and, and it's amazing to listen because you talk about wealth right and and i've been in a uh, you know, a lot of what we do is, yes, it's, it's uh, you know, we do deals with no money down as you talk, right? And you can get cash flow. Um, but also what we, a lot of what I do is transactional, okay? And it was only when I was in a mass, I'm in a, quite a few masterminds as well. And the guy said, you know, you know, do you track your net worth? And I was like, no, I mean, I make good money and I do what I need. I do what I want, you know, and I give and I, I do all these things. Um and he's like, well, you don't check your network. I was like, I don't know. I have no idea. So then he starts explaining it to me. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this is insane. How am I not tracking this? And now it becomes a game, right? It's a, it, it becomes literally a game of getting your net worth up. Like when I make, I just, I'm, as I told you before we started, I'm sitting in my RV right now in Michigan. And we just bought a house. It was in the family uh, that we've took me and my wife have just paid cash for, but straight away from the moves we've made, even though I've, I've put money in, my net worth has gone up because of the equity in the house that's there. Right. And it becomes a game. How do you get your, your, your net worth up? Um, so anyway, I mean, you've obviously been doing this for years. So you've, you've mentioned wealth a lot. So do you track things like this yourself? I used to. Right at the very yeah. beginning, I would uh, take the equities and the property I bought, and I would, and I have these little charts that show, you know, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, 800,000. And I remember when I cracked the million, I was really pretty excited about it. But when you when you get into a different uh, arena, you yeah. know, you, sometimes it's, it's hard to really determine what the value of some of the things are. What is the value of my intellectual property, for example? 
Yeah. Um, I have streams of income coming in from royalties, but my name can be used in lots of other ways. You know, you get to be a little more, a little more famous. You know, people want to use your name, and so it's hard to it's hard to determine what that value is. Um, you can track the stocks and you can track the the real estate values, but so no, I I, I don't track it that much anymore. Um, um, but, no, but you no. did, and that makes sense, yeah. right? When you get to a certain level, I be a millionaire. I wanted to be a millionaire. That was really important to me. It was something I really wanted. But today. Yeah. I, I like to track it on the number of books I've sold, frankly. That's uh, that's why, because a book is a seed. And a, and a seed, like it may not have helped the person who bought the book, but they give the book to a secondhand bookstore, and the book is still in the secondhand bookstore. I don't earn any revenue from it. You know, I already earned my royalty, so the, the one that sold to somebody else. But the influence is what I what I like to track. You know, how many people am I reaching? What does my social media look like? How, can, yeah. how, how, how wide is my influence on the people that are, that are uh, watching? You know, and, and I resonate with some people and don't resonate with others because just like, like, a, like a band, you know, singing a song, some, sometimes you resonate with one band. And like, for instance, they're resonating with you, Gavin. That's, yeah. And you invited me to come on and to chat with your your, your, your tribe, because they, they resonate with you. My, my tribe, you know, resonates with the way I say it. And they, they like the way, I, the way I sing my song. I have my lyrics and my, my tunes that I sing, and people go, well, I like the way he says it. He just like, he, you know, yeah. and other people go, I hate the way he says it. Says it, yeah. And, and so, so it is. So for you, for the, the listener and watcher, you're yeah. going to attract – First of all, you'll attract your inner circle. That's the people who will be helping you create your wealth. And they will provide for you resources. As Tony Robbins says, if you if you don't have any resources that you must be, then you must be resourceful. So you're going to be using OPR. And OPR is other people's resources. And some of those resources are financial such as cash, credit, cash flow, collateral. That's what the banker wants, the mortgage holder or broker wants. You don't have those things, and you have to have other resources. And the this four C's that I just said with you, cash, credit, cash flow, collateral, those are the four C's that every banker is looking for to, to qualify you. But the other resources that you're going to bring to the table are the things that are inside you. Because wealth always starts inside you. That's wealth with a capital W. Wealth with a small W, that's material wealth. And, and yep. that you cannot take material wealth with you to the next world. But you do take your internal wealth with you. You take your courage. You take your creativity. You take your commitment. You take your, your character. You take the, the other C's. So when I went to San Francisco, I said this challenge, send me to any city, take away my wallet, give me a hundred dollar bill, and in 72 hours, I'll buy an excellent piece of real estate using none of my own money. The LA Times saw my advertisement for the seminars I was doing in the LA Times, and they said, we don't believe this guy can do it. So they literally yeah. sent me, called me on the phone and said, we challenge you. You, you say, send you to a city, we're, we're going to pick a city. We're going to send a reporter with you. He's going to take away your, your wallet. You'll have no none of the four C's, no crash, no credit, no collateral, nothing. And you're going to have to buy a property with nothing down. What the LA Times didn't know was that the four C's is not wealth. Wealth is me showing up in a city and being clear, having clarity. That's a C word. Clarity. I want to get this done in this kind of period of time. I'm going to use my competence. Competence is I have systems, you know, stuff stuff that I know how to do because this book is full of systems. Yeah. Don't do this, don't do that, techniques, strategies, etc. But doesn't contain the other, doesn't contain the mindset stuff, which most of my books are all system oriented. But you need to have the skills of people skills and you have to have mindset skills and you combine that with your system skills, such as found in my books. Well, my books, for most of my career, didn't contain any mindset skills. Uh, I just kind of assumed, hey, if I teach you how to drive the car, you'll go drive it. 
and yeah. I found that they don't they won't drive it. They they they'll I'll, I'll show you. This is how you drive it. Yeah. This is the gas. This is the brakes. This is how you fill it up with gas. These are the knobs. These are the dials. Come on, let's go. And they wouldn't do it because of character or because of confidence or because of um, uh, they just didn't have the commitment. Commitment, that's a C word. And therefore, internal wealth is so important. So I bought seven properties in 57 hours and gave the reporter $20 and change because I knew what I was doing. I knew I was relying on the things I had inside me to go out and use them to use the system outside me to create material wealth. So people would say after I did that, well, you can do it, Robert. Obviously, you know how to do it, but an ordinary person starting from zero couldn't do this. I hate, I love it when somebody challenges me. Uh, it, it ticks me off. So I go, well, what? Let's go to, let's go to St. Louis, Missouri, center of the center of the country. License plates on, on almost the law, all the license plates, the show me state, because they're very skeptical uh, in, in Missouri. The show me state. Don't tell me, show me. So I went there, went to the unemployment lines, found people who had no knowledge. This is no, amazing. Yeah. No, no systems, uh, no money, no, none of the four C's. But I wanted to find people who had the internal wealth. So people who had no material wealth. I was looking for someone who had a little bit of courage, a little bit of chutzpah, that's a C word, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of clarity, a little bit of, you know, no competence yet. No competence because they, they didn't, hadn't done it. And you have to kind of fail your way into things. So 90 days later, they're showing me a $5,000 check of a property they bought and flipped and made five grand and then went on to make $100,000 in the next 12 months, starting from zero. So this incredible stuff today, just for your your viewers, some of them are kind of feeling maybe even a guilty or embarrassed that your that your wealth isn't as much it should be. Your credit rating your credit rating maybe sucks. You know you don't have a lot of money. Your net worth that means adding up how much your net worth is. You maybe it's a negative net worth. Maybe you don't have much money in the bank. Um, my message to you is what is your dream? What do you want? When yeah. do you want it? Where do you want it? How much of it do you want? Who do you want it with and for? Why do you want it? Those are six questions before you ask the how question. Most people just ask it opposite. They ask you, the, what's the how question first? Like, how do I find property? How do I yeah. own that property? How do I farm that property and make money? Those are three, three system skills of real estate. But they don't ask the question, what do, I, what do I want? So they walk out into the world and try to how it. They try yeah. to you know, figure out the system. And they, they don't have the internal clarity on how important is it to you to be financially independent is that really important to you because if it is you'll do whatever it takes and if it isn't important to you if your why isn't big enough you'll go out there and try a few things you'll dabble here dabble there get your hands slapped a few times because you're just starting you're a beginner you shouldn't expect to be good at the very beginning you're going to fail your way into this and if you if you uh, don't have a commitment to it, then you will fail your way out of this. You need to fail your way through this system of making money in real estate. You have to fail your way through it. And the only way to get through it is to have a very clear dream. This is what I want. This is when I want it. Give a deadline to it. Have a consequence if you miss the deadline. There's just yeah. all, all kinds of stuff I could teach you about how to drive. No, this is, so, no you, amazing, because it's it's about having, you know, I talk a lot about your why, right? Because this business is hard, right? I think business, yeah. this business, business in yeah. general, life is hard. And, and, you know, I talk a lot about having a strong why, because when it gets tough, are you going to dig in and come out the other side? Or are you going to give up? 
and go back to your comfort level, right? Which is where you're probably not happy with yeah. where the people are watching this, right? So it's really, you know, why am I doing this when it gets hard? When you don't want to make them two more phone calls or you don't want to make them extra two offers when you get off work because you want to leave your nine to five job and because it's hard and it's difficult. And you have to have a why, you know, because a lot of people say, well, I want to spend more time with the family at home with the kids. But is that why big enough? Do you need to go deeper than that? And I think a why a lot of the time for people and for me is it should make your hair stand up on your arms. You know, Uh it should make you stick to your stomach to think about it, because that's what's going to get you to do it when you don't want to do it. Yeah. Mind stuff, mindset stuff. Um, two people sitting in the same class, learning the same system. One of them's got the right mindset, off they go. The other one's got the wrong mindset. And they came to the event to learn the system because they thought the system was the secret. Yep. Systems are cheap. You can go find a used copy of any of my books for, for a buck on Amazon online you it's it's cheap system knowledge is cheap mindset knowledge is what you get a mentor for yeah and what you join a mastermind for you need to hang with people who think in a different way you need to absorb that from them and we are trained in our country by employees to be employee minded Teachers are employees. They have yeah. a steady job. They want to. They don't want to make small, slow money for a long period of time. They want security. They want safety. Why would you allow somebody like that to teach an entrepreneur? They don't get us. They yeah. really don't get how we are risk oriented because we are. We want to make big, fast money. That means five years or less. Yeah, yeah. They want to make small, slow money. And so we are totally on the different different wavelengths. So when we start showing off as as our natural entrepreneurial uh, DNA, they they tell us we can't do it, or why are you doing it this way? Why don't you go get a job? They are trying to teach us what they don't understand, and and we we have been trained that way in our society. There are, there are no entrepreneurial schools for public education from, you know, the kindergarten through through college. It's all training you to get a job, which is the last thing you want. You want, yeah. You don't want Absolutely. that. You don't want your, your mobile home, your motor home, traveling around the country with your family. Where nobody can tell you when or where or whatever to do, you know, or how much money to make. You know, so jobs are, you know, you, you earn small amounts of money, it increases an increase in your salary. Isn't that wonderful? You get another 3% this year. You get your cost of living in. You don't want a cost of living. You want to make 5,000% increase, not 5%, you know? Yeah. So this is the way we think. And, and that's why you have to hang with people because the rest of the world, you're walking down the street, they're all employees. They don't get us. They think we're nuts. Because we are nuts. This is the yeah. way we are. Thank you very and much. <laughs> and it's great. And we love it. <laughs> we love being nuts. That's great. Um, one last thing, because I know, uh, we're, you know we're coming up to time here, and I really appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, this has been, this has been fantastic. Um, when you went to the unemployment line, right, you picked two or three people out. Did you interview them, like, in terms of ask them questions? Did you actually go, you're not going to make it, you're not going to do it? Did you do that, or did you just pick three? Yeah, yeah so when I talk about you have to fail your way through it, so we chose people who were willing to fail their way through it. We interviewed them. Uh, When they came down the aisle with their application, if they didn't look me in the eye, if they didn't have the confidence to at least look me in the eye, let me know they wanted it. If they looked down and looked a little nervous, I put their application in my left hand. If you look me in the eye, like, I want this, I put their application in my right hand. That was the first cut. They didn't know it. They still don't know it to this day. The people in my right hand we interviewed, and we interviewed all of them. Uh, There were, you know, a couple dozen, and we interviewed them and selected the ones we thought were a bit better. There were uh, 11, I think, 
that we interviewed, eight, eight or nine or ten or less, somewhere, somewhere there. All the rest of the people, when, when we put the, the the sheet up on the wall to show who had been who had made the cut, the people who had not made the cut, whose name did not appear, we made it. They would get back on the list if they just said. Are you sure you made the right decision? Yeah, none, on it. all of them took the first rejection and left. Good, goodbye. The eight that we did select, we interviewed that night again with the mayor of St. Louis, Missouri, uh, the ex-mayor, Mayor Pelker. And all eight of them, we found out who we thought would be the best. We rejected all eight of them. But three of them would not be rejected. And they called. Yeah. They contacted me back, and they said, "Are you sure? Can I just be at the back of the room? I'll, 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 I'll be the water boy. Just, just let me be yeah. in the back of the room." Uh, yeah. Those, those three made the cut because we cut them all, and they put themselves back on the list. So that's what life is all about, you know. If they, if if they can't make the first cut, they can't handle the first rejection. Goodbye. Next. Oh. Until you finally realize that there may be many rejections in this process in order for you to finally win. An entrepreneur has what, eight or nine rejections, businesses that they start that fail before they have one, one that, keep, that, that, that crushes it. Uh, that's yeah. why entrepreneurs, are, we, were, we, we just naturally forget our failures. We just learn from them and go on to the next thing. So good luck, everybody. I wish you well. Go to robertallen.com to download a copy of uh, the audio of Think and Grow Rich and the digital book of Think and Grow Rich. Yep. If you read that book and let me know, email me at success at robertallen.com. You have to have, have, have to have listened to the book or read it. And then uh, if you qualify to have done it, then I'll send you another book. Uh, it's the mindset book. It's called The Four Maps of Happy, Successful People. You can get it on Amazon, but if you read the first, you know, Thinking Go Rich, and I know you like, you'll like, you study it, they'll do it, then I'll give you the next one. Yep. Four Maps of Happy, Successful People, the system for how you think so you can do anything you want. All right? I love it. See Absolutely. No, I appreciate it. Sorry. Have a nice day. See everybody. God bless. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, guys, you have your marching orders again from uh, Robert G. Allen himself. And uh, and this is a huge opportunity for me and you guys that are listening to us, whether you're listening on the, on the YouTube or on the podcast, make sure you like and subscribe. Let us know what you think. If you're watching us on YouTube, sorry if the video is a little choppy, but the audio should be good. Um, and again, Follow them instructions and do. Why did he, Why did Robert just say, if you watch or listen to the first book, email me at this, because he wants to disqualify you. He wants to make sure that you're actually going to do these steps, yeah. and that's what we are talking about. There is a point to that, So, and that's what this whole thing has been about. So make sure you do that. And again, I appreciate it. If you're interested in working with me, guys, go to reinetwork.com slash join. We'll have a conversation. Robert, thank you. I appreciate you so much. You are the OG. You are the GOAT of our industry. And again, my, a lot of my teachings come from you. So thank you. Uh, and uh, again, have a great rest of your day as well. Thank See you so everybody. much. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.